Hello everybody and welcome. Today I'm going to show you a fully functioning Enigma machine in Minecraft. Some of you might be wondering, what is an Enigma machine? Well, now I'm going to tell you. An Enigma machine is a machine that was invented by the Germans for in World War One and Two for making and breaking codes. And it was it was a very complicated machine, um, which mechanically was, was quite simple. But each time you press the letter you'd turn one of the voters and the beauty of the machine is that each time you press a letter it will be different so A on the first the first time you press A it might be come out as G and the second time you press A it might come out as R for instance and that made it very hard to crack and I've made a couple of these machines before which worked entirely without command blocks um, but I never finished these because they took a long time and the wiring was just was just boring uh, but I've tried making one with command blocks the only command that I've used is the set block command and it's entirely based on the counters and adders which I demonstrated in a previous video um, I thought it would be smaller and simpler and it is smaller than the other design but it is not simpler I confused myself so much while building this but um, let me show you in action. I set up the the reels to these numbers. This shows you what turn number the reel is on. Um, it'll take about a minute to encode one letter, so I'll have to skip through that. But the main reel advance will advance reel one, and when this is finished advancing, it'll advance reel two, reel three, etc. So let me just remember what what position the reel is on at the moment. That's ten. 17, 8, 11. I'll write that down because we'll need that when we decode it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to encode a short sentence like hello. We'll go with that. Well, I'll start by pressing H. And now I'm going to skip and wait for a while uh, while the machine runs. Okay, so we now have an output. Our output is under X. So our first letter H goes to X. I'll write that down so we can remember it. So, in order to advance to the second reel, we'll click the main reel advance. So we'd move up to 18, 8, 11. And then we can carry on. You see the thing is reset. Everything's back to the way it was. And we can click E. Okay, so we've got an output for E and that output is I right so so far for hello we've got H and E which becomes X and I now we advance the reel again and now we can click L okay so this output for L is P so X I P and this is the bit where you see where the Enigma machine comes into its own it's because we're going to press L again and it won't come back out as P. We're going to do the main reel advance and then we click L for the second letter of second L and hello. And as you can see, the second output for L is M. So now we've only got the last letter to do. You can tell the kind of time scale this works upon because it's turned to day in that time and so and last main reel advance and we need to click O right I'll click O now so our last output for the final letter is E so our translation the encoded copy of hello reads X I P M E which is obviously indecipherable to someone who doesn't know the code someone who's reading that would be unable to tell what you were trying to say now in order to decode it you need to reset the reels to the same position they were to start with when you started writing the code this means that even if someone has an identical copy of your Enigma machine they have 17,576 different possibilities in order to try to decode the system which is why it was so hard for the British to crack 
Um, I'll reset that now. I can res I can reset the whole reel by pressing this button, but I'm not going to do that because these are all the same. Actually, yeah, I will reset. I'll, I'll reset the whole reel. A hard reset, which will take everything to one. Now I'll advance through the reels. I want to get the first reel to 17. I'll keep clicking on this, and this is, this will advance the reel to three, four. I'll do that quickly and then come back to you. So the first reel is now set to 17. I need to set the second reel to eight. Uh, I'll do that quickly. And the final reel needs to be set to 11. Like so. Hang on, what are we on now? We're on eight, no, sorry, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. So now all our wheels are in the same position as they were to start with. Seventeen, eight, and eleven. Now we can decode. So if you remember from before, H where we pressed it went to X. So now if we press X, we can decode it and hopefully it should come back to H. And so it has, there we go. Our first output is H, now we can advance the reel again and click I, which is what our output for E was last time. H, I. And hopefully it should come back to E, which it has done. Now, turn the reel again. We can press Oh, um, P, which should come back to L. I'm getting a bit of lag there. And then M. And finally E, which should make the last of our letter O. Um, A, B, C, D, E and O should light up here. And there you have it gentlemen! A league machine built in Minecraft that's completely translated the word hello into XIPME and decoded it again. Now, now you've seen that it works, what I'm going to try and do now is try and give you an idea of how the actual Enigma machine works and then I'll give you a tour of the facilities and show you how I managed to model it in Minecraft. Okay, so this is what I'm going to use to try and give you an idea of how the mechanical Enigma machine worked. Each one of these colored strips represents a reel of the Enigma machine, which is a little cog wheel which turns when you press the button to advance onto the next letter. And inside each wheel there's a set of wires which change the way the output goes. Now if I was to input through blue here, then that would output through this wire here, which is how I've represented it which is in a different position on the thing to where it originally went in and this is what helps to develop the randomness of the of the device which will then come out through the go out through the red which will go through this link into the green which will come out here and now out here we would have a reflector which allows the reels to be reused effectively giving us six reels instead of just the three and it makes it easier to decode in the machine so imagine if this linked through to yellow for example then we'd power back through the yellow um, which would come out here and would go through orange which would come out here which would go through red which would come out here and we'd have the red output we'd have our output on red so that if we were to decode it we'd go back through the red back through the orange um, back through the yellow and this would link back to the green and we'd make our way back to our original input and the way it changes with the changing of the reels is I'll, I'll remove these quickly is your original input was on blue for example and you turn the reels once and your input is now on 
is now through the orange so it's changed and the way we're calculating this is imagine this is the one two three four fifth input and we turn the reel once and it gives us the sixth um, method of going through uh, if you understand that. If this was the fifth method of going through because this is where it was on setting naught when we add one to the turning reel we go through this which makes the sixth way to go through and the output for this has moved down one as well so we need to... I'll try and explain that again what we're doing here is is we're getting our original entry number adding the turning number to it to get the number of the number of which the uh, wiring is and the wiring outputs here so we need to subtract the turning number from that because the normal output would have been here to give us the output here if that makes sense I, I don't know if it does but that's the way I calculate the same thing that's occurring here into the Enigma machine that I've got running that was a bit complicated and I don't know if I explained it very well but hopefully that makes sense um, and if not ask somebody else and now for a lightning tour of the facilities that make this device work right first we have the counters and these counters will tell you what position the reel is on now these ones are here this is the counter for the first reel and we'll count all the way up to 26 at which point it will add one to the counter for the second reel and when that reaches 26 it will add one to the counter to the third wheel and reset itself and I've shown you how this works in the videos on counters but when it reaches the end of here this removes the stone block here and places another one up here and when this reaches the end it removes the stone block that's here and places another one up here which will advance the redstone block on one and this output is red over here and this is where you can read what real the block what real what the, what the real number is and this is plumbed into the system through these which spawn a block here allowing these to be triggered which adds the real number to this adder and this adder is where everything goes on it's where the letters are, the letter number is added to the real number and counts along the top for the output number. Now, this is a little bit complicated because all of these numbers add into here, which which counts along and adds whatever it counts to to this value here, which has been spawned in as the real number. If you got that, I'm I'm very impressed because <laughs> I didn't explain it very well, but we got the advantage of this system is the whole section at the bottom in this counter can be reused and the way we reuse it is this switchboard at the top and these systems here it's, it's based around this counter which tells us what position we are on the reel whether we're plumbing our current answer through disk 1 um, the, end, the last half of the process of disk, disk 1 disk 2 disk 2 part 2 disk 3 disk 2 part 3 sorry disk 3 part 2 um, and then we got the reflector and then uh, the reverse of disc 3, the reverse of disc 2, reverse of disc 1 and then the end um, and what this does is this will spawn in a redstone dust here all the way along the line if we're going to trigger disc 1 and that will trigger off only the um, command blocks which are selected at the time which allows the output from the adder to be brought back into the circuit at the right place um, and this will trigger a letter and it will trigger the current rotation number, the, the real number to be set off um, I think that's about everything that's in here I could go into a lot more detail but it would be very complicated and to be honest I've confused myself a lot of the time when I've been building this so I don't think I'll be able to explain it any better but yeah, a completely functioning Enigma machine in Minecraft. Uh, if you want to find out about more of the other designs, uh, please comment and maybe I'll put a po picture of those up. Those are completely buildable in survival, although I've no idea why anybody would want to. Um, and I think it's possible that they may actually work quicker 
and they may be easier to understand than all of this rubbish. But they are much bigger and bulkier, and it means it's almost impossible to reuse the same system over and over again. So you have to build six individual disks, because this is reused six times for three of the forward disks and three of the reverse disks. But yeah, if you want to find out more, and then please comment and ask me for another video. Um, thank you for watching. I've been Liquid Demon, or Brother John, and